How important is high school education of physics? Is it not more important that everyone can just read, write and do arithmetic and then when they get here to university and have made a conscious decision to become a physicist, that you start moulding them and telling them what's important? Well, that's a very interesting um, stance to take on that. Our argument is that there has to be some, or the traditional argument is that there has to be some background there, that we cannot just dump them in in first year and take them the whole way, that they have to have been exposed to basic concepts in physics, they have to be exposed to, and this is the important bit, basic concepts in mathematics, including, and in particular, calculus. And um, it's, if, there just isn't enough time in the, in, in the three or four year degree to really take students from having absolutely no knowledge base to learning, you know, getting as far as quantum field theory or whatever, that's an awful lot to try and get into a, a university course. And even, you know, there, there's obviously, a, even for those people who don't go on to physics in university, who don't go on to engineering or maths or chemistry or whatever in university, we have to teach the sciences. You know, the general populace has to be um, taught about the, 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 the importance and the wonders of science. And um, in fact, I would argue that it's skewed or has been skewed far too much the other way, that the people who are going on to university aren't getting the background they um, require because the argument has been, that, well, what we need to do is have a broad bro brush approach, get as many people interested in science as possible. And the way that has happened is to throw away a lot of the mathematical detail. And that's a real huge problem for us at university. And also I feel incredibly, incredibly sorry for the students coming in who come from A level, or come from high school, with a completely different view of what physics actually is. And then they come here and they get an awful lot of mathematics. And they think, why did I, I didn't sign up to do a mathematics degree. I signed up to do a physics degree. And we have to continually tell them that maths is the language of physics. And you cannot, it's just impossible to do physics by chucking away the maths. And unfortunately, lower down, the earlier years of the, um, the student's education, that's what happened. The other thing I really want to stress as well, because it's so too easy, you know, for somebody who's in their mid-40s to go, oh, it was so much better in my day, we were so much more rigorous, etc. I've got, um, I did my degree in Dublin City University, there's a physics education um, group there and one of the people in that, in that group starts off his seminar, one of his seminars with, um, it's been well known for 200 years that the quality of first year students has been dropping dramatically. And, you know, th there's a real, it's very easy to get caught up in a Daily Mail type rant about how much better it was, you know, in a golden age. And really, you know, the students are as good as ever they were. Um, the, you know, some of the students doing PhDs coming through now are just phenomenally good. And, um, but those students will always do well, almost irregardless of the system, and they'll hack through it. The problem is for those who perhaps are not in the top tier, how do we, how do we teach them and how do we educate them? And I have some, uh, how can I, I have some sympathy for the view that what we want to do is, is sort of bring those people in, get them excited about science, and, you know, do an endless bloody problems about inclined planes or friction or rolling balls or whatever. It, it's perhaps not the most exciting thing. It's incredibly important to understand the physics, but it may not attract people in. Can I, uh, a few questions. One of them is you said you, you encounter physics students who turn up in the first week or two, are hit by all this mathematics and say, this isn't what I expected physics to be. What did they expect physics to be? They expected physics to be a lot closer to what they've done at A-level, where there's, for example, calculus has been ripped out of, of, of A-level physics. You know, the, the fundamental <laughs> basis of the, you know, so much of physics. Um, differential and integral calculus is no longer there. And we have to introduce that. We have to, even at the level of um, drawing diagrams, which, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, you'd have to set up a problem, you'd have to think about it at, at A level, level. You'd have to think about, well, how do I draw my diagram here? How do I work out what the forces are? How do I decompose those forces into, into the various components? Now, an awful lot of the time, the diagram is drawn and it's a sort of tick box exercise or a multiple choice type exercise. And so, Set, thinking of a problem from first principles and thinking about how do I set this out step by step, that's a skill that has, I would argue, has been lost. And again, you know, the, 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 the problem is the, 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 the powers that be, I think, you know, really have students' best interests at heart and almost in some cases have the, you know, the, the best interests in terms of the country at heart, in terms of how they attract people into science. But 
The problem is that there hasn't been enough discussion with university departments and um, it's left it very difficult for students coming in. Sorry, I'm waffling briefly. It's okay, I just feel like you didn't answer my question. I felt Say like it again, my, yeah. My question is, what do they think physics is? Not what do they then find out it is. Yeah. What, do they, what do they come expecting? Do they come expecting a Brian Cox documentary? Or? They, expect, they come expecting something which I think is a, a little less quantitative than they get. It's a little bit more descriptive, a little bit more wordy, a little bit more focused on um, wow, bang, whiz, bang, cutting edge physics. And of course, we actually try and do that. And here in Nottingham, we have something called Frontiers of Physics where we try to bring that in. But you've got to take that and you've got to have the, you know, the bread and butter stuff. Because without the bread and butter stuff, you can't really get to grips with this cutting edge stuff. So they, I think they may feel a little bit, um, how can I put it? Uh, you know, they've been sold something perhaps that they didn't think they were going to get. But that, okay. do you think you'd get them here in the first place if they knew the truth? Uh, I think we'd get... Uh, yeah, I, th I think we'd get a substantial uh, uh, number of those who come here. Whether we get quite as many as we do now, uh, that's a very, very good question, Brady. And uh, I, again, I can see the arguments that you don't want to make it really, really dry and rigorous and have 14-page derivations, etc. It's a question, as ever, of balance, and we've tipped too far the wrong way. And um, it's unfair on the students. It's unfair on the students coming in. One other aspect, and I'll shut up after this, and perhaps the most frustrating aspect of all for me, is that the examination system here was set up as a market, basically, where you had different providers of examination papers who had, of course, to meet some government regulations with regard to the, the overall standard of the course. But, of course, what happens is that the schools then pick and choose which particular um, uh, examination board they're going to go with because what they want to do is maximise the scores they get, which in turn maximise where they are in the league table. So what you have there is education, something which is a public good being driven entirely by the market. Very, very, very bad situation. How do the examination boards react to this mix and match shopping situation? So the, uh, exa the, it's more what the examination boards have to um, put, put forward examination papers based on a syllabus that's laid down, but there is a quite a great deal of flexibility. And what schools do is they hunt. Um, or they, they choose the, 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 the examination board and the examination papers which they think are the easiest. And what's, what can happen is you can see how that will evolve because the, the whole system is locked into um, really not so much the attainment of the students but the attainment of the school. And then the school wants to get its highest placing in the league table and um, it will do pretty well anything to get up the league table. So what you're saying is the exams become easier and easier? Yeah. You say that's in the best interest of the school. Yeah. It's good for the students too that want to get into university. Uh, yeah, but um, what's for, there's an interesting dichotomy here. We continually, as academics, continually you know, bemoan the, the, the education in schools and that the, the educational standards are dropping. If you look at the number of 2-1 and first class degrees we award, that's not dropping off a cliff. That's steadily going up as well. So there are some interesting uh, market dynamics there, which I guess we, if we were to go into might take us the best part of an hour. But um, there clearly are issues with regard to rigour and um, at GCSE and A level. That's clearly affecting the education of high, high school students. It's clearly giving them a distorted view of really what physics is all about. We have to draw a balance between you know, getting students excited about science and actually getting that rigour in. And that's not an easy thing to solve. So if I wave my magic wand now and we had Education Secretary Philip Moriarty, <laughs> what would be the first thing you said at that first meeting with all your education chiefs? What, was, what would you be changing? Oh, what a great question, Brady. What a great question. So the first thing I would change if I were Michael Gove oh, God, um, would be, first of all, get rid of the, the, um, the idea of having different providers. Get, get rid entirely of the idea of having a market anywhere close to something which is um, a public good like education. And that doesn't matter whether it's primary school, secondary school or higher education. Let's think about it as a public good that's something that should not be driven by market choices and profit. And then I'd be drummed out of the Tory party. What happens to those students who are the, the more disillusioned ones? 
Do they drop out? Do they learn the math? Do they get terrible? Do they change courses? What, what's happening at this end? We actually have quite a low dropout rate. Um, the students, on the whole, you know, dig in and get on with it. I know that's not um, the, the classical tra tra traditional view of students, but our students, you know, I can only go by the students we have here in Nottingham. I, they're a pretty impressive bunch. <laughs> Sorry, Brady, but they are. Well, obviously, they're very well educated <laughs> at the high school, then, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, but they, the, the, the difficulty is, I guess, in that they learn in a completely different way. You know, these videos that you're doing, you know, for me, if I want to learn about something, I don't go to a video. That's the last thing I go, because I don't want to hear somebody else's voice in my head. I want to read this, have my voice in my head, and put it together the way I want. But that's not how students today learn, or the vast majority. They get an awful lot from this type of presentation. For me, this is useless. One last thing. You talk about maybe needing more maths, more rigour uh, in high school. I think I'm of normal intelligence. And I really enjoy talking about physics with you and the other guys here. But right. when you start using a lot of mathematics, I lose it, I lose interest. It's really bad for me. When I was at high school, and I knew even less, I can imagine if my high school teacher said, I want to tell you about some interesting physics, and then he blew me away with some really complicated calculus, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see the wood for the trees. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And of course, what you don't want to do is drown students in maths. But look at number file. You know, and I think you're, 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 you're understating your, your intelligence to say average intelligence, Brady. But look at number file. That's exactly the way it should be done in terms of, um, you know, gently bringing these concepts and you've looked at some incredibly complicated concepts most recently zero and it's a question of, of coupling those strange esoteric concepts to, to things the students are more familiar with and trying it, it, I'm not saying that it is easy but trying to to bring those couple the, the the stuff they don't know with the stuff they do know and bring them along. Of course, if you drown them with maths, it's never going to happen. But on the other hand, you cannot leave the maths to one side. Because if you leave the maths to one side, you're building up huge problems. Particularly calculus. It's absolutely shocking that the calculus has been pulled out of the A-level physics course.